if you love The Conjuring and thought the second one was all right, then you're gonna think the third one is just, just something else. Here are my thoughts on The Conjuring. The devil made me do it. Why isn't it called The Conjuring 3? You have The Conjuring, you have The Conjuring 2, then you have The Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It. There's no three anywhere to be found. Why, why is Hollywood like this? Why is the naming so inconsistent? They're gonna become the Fast and the Furious franchise soon. The next one will be called Conjuring without the the. And then the next one will be called Fiverine. I just, I don't understand. Ed and Lorraine Warren are back, baby, and they're ready to solve some mysteries in the 80s. This is gonna be a spoiler-free video, so if you haven't seen the movie yet, you're probably safe to still watch this. In fact, I don't really understand the story anyways, so even if there were spoilers, I'd, I'd just have the information incorrectly. Because one of the big problems I have with this film is stuff happens, I don't really understand why it does, character motivations don't make a lot of sense, and ultimately, it's all kind of for nothing. Let's start out on a positive note. I don't think this is a bad movie. I just don't think it's a very good one either. It's it's Conjuring, kind of. You have the Warrens here, which automatically kind of bump it up a little bit because I love me some Ed and Lorraine. I love their little, their mysteries that they solve. They're like an adult version of Scooby-Doo. It has some decent atmosphere, decent being the primary word right there that I'm gonna focus on because it's not great, it's just, it's just okay. We'll get more into that in a little bit. The music is solid. It's eerie. It, it is one of those movies where it's about 10 times louder than the dialogue though. So if you're watching on HBO Max, you're gonna want to keep that controller in hand if you have kids or you know, you need to be a little bit quiet because you'll have a scene where people are talking like, yeah, I don't really know what's happening. And then suddenly music kicks in and it's like, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Something weird's going. <laughs> Do you think that it has something to do with <laughs> That's possible. <laughs> I think you get what I'm saying. I'm gonna give this as both a pro and a con because it's done to death, which would be the con version of this. But as a pro, all the like body disfigurement shit looks pretty cool. They do it well. If that's something you can do well, they did it well. You know, people are twisting and turning in all sorts of unnecessary manners. My wife looks at that and she's like, wait, I mean, it, that person's dead, right? You're twisting your bones all around. You're just straight up dead, regardless if they, they like get the demon out of this person. And I'm, I'm just trying to defend it. Like, no, 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 idiot. They can, you can still live when your bones are twisted unnaturally and, and, and your spine and, and, and like your organs are all moved around in opposite ways. Mad, demon magic, you fool. My last pro is also a con because on paper, this story is, is fine. It's based on a true story, you know, kind of like 300 is based on true events. I mean, you get like a tiny fraction of a percentage right and the rest of it's all just noise and nonsense and fluff. If you believe in demon possession, I'm certainly not going to be the one that can convince you otherwise. That's a journey of self-discovery you're going to have to take on your own. The movie starts with the priest and the Warrens teaming up to try to do an exorcism on a little boy. It doesn't really go as planned, uh, but fortunately the demon does leave the boy's body. Because the sister's boyfriend opts to become the new host. It's a kind of a touching, you know, self-sacrifice he does. I would have liked more between the boyfriend and the and the kid. They had a good little relationship and I think a little bit more heart there would have would have brought things out further. This movie's pacing is quick though. It moves fast. They don't have time to really dwell on relationship stuff or 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 a lot of heart. It, it's mostly just scene to scene, things happen and it's over. And if you even think about it for a second, it, you're gonna fail. You're gonna fail to understand the, the complexities of this plot. The demon's out for blood. And I guess I do have one final pro. The one thing this movie does that I haven't seen a lot of, I mean, granted, I haven't seen a ton of horror movies, but I've seen a, I've seen a fair amount, is I don't recall any where the demon takes over a person's body and then shows them fake images in order for them to kind of go into self-defense mode. Usually the demon's like, let's do bad stuff, let's kill that person. But instead it projects scary imagery, thinking this person's on the heroic side of things when in fact that demon dog turned out to be a cute little puppy that you just slaughtered. That doesn't happen, there's no, there's no puppy slaughtering. I'm just using an example off the top of my head. Why did I go to puppy killing? That's a journey I'll probably have to go on on my own later. Let's talk about the cons. The biggest one, and I didn't know this going in, is James Wan did not direct. He didn't come back for the third. Maybe that's why it's not called Conjuring 3. Maybe this is kind of a an offshoot episode, and then we'll get a proper Conjuring 
three down the road <laughs> when James Wan comes back to direct. When I saw the trailers for this film, it did seem way more Hollywood to me. And I just thought, all right, Wan, he's fresh off Aquaman. So now he's into the more green screen, uh, bombastic effects, very polished. And I was okay with it because Conjuring 1 and 2 are very different from each other. You know, the first is kind of gritty and, and you know, it, it's, got a, it's got a really ghost story feel to it. While the second one for a large portion of it doesn't have a lot of ghost stuff happening, it, it's very kind of mystery thriller-esque. And I, I dug that too for its own reasons. It just, they had two different styles to them. So for the third one, when I saw the trailer, I'm like, all right, cool. We got three different styles going on with, with the Warrens kind of tying it all together. This is a fun thing they're doing. Uh, Wands trying new things out. I dig it. Um, but then I saw the movie and thought, okay, he, he dropped the ball here. This wasn't scary in the slightest. You could tell when they were in front of green screens, there was just too much pageantry to everything. Nothing felt grounded. Nothing felt real. While I also applaud the script for going a different direction than your standard haunting fare, it just, it, it makes it feel disjointed from the other two movies at the end of the day. And also, not scary at all. I, I didn't jump once. And you know what, I'm not, I'm not easy to scare, but I go into movies like this wanting to have it happen, you know? It's like going on a roller coaster and yawning because you're bored. That shouldn't be the case. You should want to go up that thing, click, 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 and, and you should be tensing up, you should be nervous, you should be like, holy God, I'm there, there's like such a low percentage chance I'm gonna fly off of this thing and die, but that could be me. I could be that one. And then, ba -ba 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 -ba! this movie never really even gets the ramp up to that. So a big con is the script. It, it's messy, it's not put together well, the lines are super generic. I quoted ahead of time three things in advance that the actor was gonna say, just because I've heard them so many times. You know, kind of like the, dear God, or oh my God, you know, things like that. Are we clear? And then the other person says, Crystal. Which by the way, uh, it, it doesn't happen in real life. I always wait for someone to give me that opening. Hey, are we clear? And then I just look at them. Crystal. God, I, I so badly want that to happen. Another thing I really want to happen is to be at like a coffee shop or something one time and see like a woman, I am married. I, this would just be purely for like a movie, a movie magic in real life sort of situation. A woman's like looking around for a place to sit and I just push the chair out from the table with my foot. Just be like, as I'm reading a book with some tea or even a coffee's fine. And then don't say anything though. Just don't, really don't even acknowledge her. Just so that she'd come over and sit down. Again, I'm married and this, this will never happen. But it's just one of those things in my head I think would be fantastic. So we have a story that doesn't pull you into the world. We have visuals that certainly don't pull you into the world. Although there are some cooly tricks of the camera. There's a shot where, you know, one of the characters runs at the main protagonist. And then as they go through the shadow, they come out looking like someone else. There's some cool stuff like that. Not scary. Just cool. In the other Conjuring movies, there was also these fun side villains and characters that popped up, especially in the second one where we have the nun, we get the Annabelle reference again, who showed up in the first one. In this third film, they don't have any of that. There's this fat, waterlogged, naked person that pops up once in a while. Not scary. Let's put it this way. If this was the first Conjuring movie to get made, I wouldn't be very excited for future Conjurings. It's kind of by the books. It's pretty generic, which is sad to say because I thought the past ones really kind of did some fun things outside of the box and really put you into that atmosphere. This just feels, it feels stale. It feels um, underdeveloped. It feels undercooked. And it's just so heavy with the effects and the budget that I, I just couldn't get involved at all. It's a shame. And the plot feels like something more akin to like an episode of Supernatural rather than this universe of Conjuring. For my final score, I give this Conjuring five out of 10 dead puppies. Oh my God, what a, what a gruesome image. But I said the puppy thing earlier and that's kind of what I had to latch onto. In my last video, I did puppy bones. So I, I gotta get away from the puppy thing. Thanks for watching the video. If you haven't, make sure to subscribe. There's videos weekly. I, I do a couple a week, as a matter of fact. You can like the video if you had a good time and to show a little bit of support. And you could join me on Patreon at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies for even more bonus episodes of shows.
If you need more than that, I have plenty to give. I'm on Twitch at twitch.com slash Adam Olinger where I'm playing games badly. I have a second channel called Adam Olinger. Plus, every Friday you can find me on Screen Rant where I do a show called Real Rivalries, pitting two movies head to head. A lot of options for you. Do with that information what you will.